Welcome to the new episode of Series Linux, Episode 13, Season 2 of the Trilogy of Seasons. <laughs> Alright, so today we're talking about how to compile software manually by yourself. In previous videos, we've installed software ourselves through like apt-get, and if you were to install Ansible, you would be just doing apt-get install Ansible, or Emacs, or literally anything that you want to install in your system. So that's kind of the easy way of doing it. But what if you want to compile that software yourself? There is a way to do it, to install it manually by compiling it. The reason why you would want to do this is if, one, you're a developer, and you want to kind of modify how it gets installed and you kind of need it for something very specific for what you're trying to achieve as a developer or if you're just trying to modify the source code another reason if you're not a developer and you're just a sysadmin or you want to do system engineering then sometimes these apt-get packages are out of date or they are missing something and you need to add that inside of the package while it's installing. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And for this example, we're using HTOP. So here's the HTOP website. It's got all kinds of documentation on it. So if we want to get started, we can just go to download. And under download, we have sources and binaries. Binaries are pre-compiled, meaning that this is probably the stuff that you're going to be pulling when you're doing app get install htop. This is kind of like the pre-built, the auto installs, I guess. The sources are the source code. And this is what you're going to be using if you're compiling the software by yourself. So let's go under sources. Here it gives us a little tutorial of what it is. We're using GNU auto tools and we're going to be using this command to probably install it. So. Here it's showing the different packages per distribution, and so here it's showing us if we're using tarball, this is probably the one to install. If we're using GitHub, then we'll probably have to go to here for the latest version. If we're using a Git repository, then we'll probably use this one. And down here it just shows the binaries, but in this video we're going to be using tarball. Tarball is just like a compressed file that can be unzipped, so kind of like a zip or or anything like that, but with tarball the files are like dot tar oh, okay page not found I guess we can go through Google for htop tarball source All right, so I found a little something here, compiling from source, and is this the tarball? Probably because we see tar.gz, which is like the format, the file format for tar, and then it pipes into this tar thing. Then we're doing some tar commands. So this is probably the one that we're looking for. I don't know for sure, but let's have some fun. Let's check it out. So, all right. We're going to be doing a little bit of back and forth here. I'm going to open up a... Hold on, first of all... Let's... Just trying to see if... Yeah, this is one line. Okay. So I can go ahead and copy-paste this. Copy. We're going to head over to another tile. And before we paste this in here, the command starts with wget. It's like apt-get, but wget. We can do man wget to see the manual for it. And here we can see that this is like a GNU downloader. 
See, it says right here, the non-interactive network downloader for GNU. GNU Linux. And then it gives us some different options. So we can do dash R. You know, you can just kind of go through the manual to see dash V for version, dash H for help. Cool stuff. So we can go ahead and paste our command in here. So our command is doing wget. We've got some functions in here. Again, we can go into manual to see what they do. Then we do wget this big package. Actually, it says wget twice. So let's see how that works. We got the pipe into the tar. And if we don't know what that does, well, we can just do man tar. Here's GNU tar manual. And if we go down this way, maybe we can find what those switches do. X is extract. That was one of the ones in there. Uh, we, I think I saw a W and a V as well. W is verify. V is probably version. Verbose. Okay. Verbosely lists files processed. Okay, so that's what... That's what this does. So it extracts. It's verbose and it verifies? I, I, I can't remember anymore. Doesn't matter. Let's hit enter. It's a VM anyways. Doesn't matter if we break anything. And it didn't work because... I don't know. I don't know why it didn't work, but let's just write it out manually. HTTP hisham.hm.htop dash releases dash 2.0 point 2 htop 2.0.2.tar.gz Does this work? And I think it does. Okay. Let's go over to our other one. Copy. Okay. We didn't get anything. We didn't get any error output, so that might be a good sign that it worked. Change the directory. Now we're going to configure this. We might have to change this to VI. But, um, no? Okay, cool. Then we do make install. This says do make first, so we'll just type in make. Then we could do make install. Okay, so we can do one of these. Let's say sudo apt install make. All right, well, it looks like it's yelling at me. So anyways, let's clear the screen. Let's just take a look at, let me zoom out a little bit because this is gonna be a big list. I can zoom in a little bit. Come on, how do I zoom in? Control plus plus. I'm doing control plus plus. Whatever, all right. Okay, so, here are all the things, the files, the configurations, the processes, the everything that made up this htop directory that we compiled. These are all the resources, all the source code and configurations that this application needs, and this includes dependencies, meaning that some applications need other application packages to run, and dependencies are something that your package manager automatically handles. But when you install from source, we don't have that luxury. So, so we have to make sure that our dependencies, whatever they are in here, have to be connected to whatever else. And if we're missing dependencies, then we have to install those or add them somehow. So talking about open source, this is what open source means. Any one of these programs, I could just type in vi, htopc 
And this is all of the code that that is compiled with. Here's, and it's written in C. You can change anything in here. You can change any parameter. You can delete any parameter. You can modify if there is a bug in the program that you don't want there, or if maybe the bug is just a feature <laughs> and you just think it's a bug. Well, you can get rid of it or modify it here to make it do what you want it to do. So that's that's the cool thing about open source is now we have absolute control over every aspect of the software that we installed. However, when we're getting started with compiling software, the very first thing we need to configure is configure. Not config h, not config log, just configure. So we do vi configure, and here are the configuration parameters. Now, if we go ahead and do this, we're probably going to break a couple things. This is all in shell binary. There are still a couple steps we need to do, and that includes installing more packages. So let's go ahead and do mod 3, make a new tile, and in this tile, we're going to install a couple more things. So let's do sudo apt get install. We're going to install something called build essential, which is a metadata compiler that kind of enables us to modify C more effectively. Another one is auto make. As you saw, we tried doing the make command earlier, but it didn't work because of course it's not installed. Another one we'll do is check install. Check install enables our package managers to kind of check the to check to make sure dependencies in different package managers are working properly, maybe. And it makes sure that whenever you install these source compilers, that your package managers know where all these different files are and all, where all the different dependencies are. Meaning if you need to uninstall one of these source files and you got files all over the place that you made for it and you don't remember where they all, then check install can kind of show the system where everything is to make it uninstalling a lot easier, to make troubleshooting a lot easier, or making updating it a lot easier. Then the other thing we're going to install is a version control software. This helps us manage different versions of our code simultaneously. It's, it almost has these Git capabilities. And if you're familiar with Git, Git allows many people, a whole team or even a whole company, to be working on code projects together and be able to do version control and be able to manage everything in a way that everybody knows what everyone's doing. Everybody knows the current version up to date and why it's up to date. What has changed every time someone has changed it. So we can even do git. Let's do git core. Let's do mercurial is another one. So to do a quick recap, this is one command. It's an apt get install command. We're building we're installing build essentials, which is a software. We're installing automake, which is a software. We're installing check install, which is a software. And we're installing these three packages, which are different packages for softwares that do similar things. All right, so let's just Get rid of that. All right, so now we've got all our stuff installed. So now we can go to mod two. We can start compiling our software. So we're currently inside the directory that has all our source code and our configurations and all of everything that we need. So we can go ahead and configure our configure script. And if for whatever reason you can't do that, we could try checking the permissions first of all. configure. Here we can see it's executable, but if we want to change these, then we could do, you know, L chmod777 configure. And now you got read write all the way across the board. Or if you want to be a bit more secure in like a production environment, you might want to do chmod600 and then it's just read and write, but you probably can't execute that. Hold on. So the then you would need, what is it?
yeah, or something like that. I don't know, play around with those numbers, but should be able to get it to work. All right, so let's go ahead and run this script. So we're not going to do vi configure. We're going to do dot slash configure. And dot slash means to execute that script. So we're not trying to edit it. We're just trying to execute it, run it. All right, so now our system is going through all these checklists to make sure that everything's authentic. Configuration error you may want to use disable. So lib cursors, curses, cursors. This is kind of like a graphical interface for text tools. So let's do sudo apt get install libin curses w. Unable to locate package. Okay. So we can go over to our browser and find this thing. Libin curse. All right, let's try this one. Copy. I'm going to go over to our third tab here. Paste this in here. Yes. All right. No errors, I think we won here. So, all right, let's go over to the other tab and let's try doing this configure thing again, see if it works. Let's see what we're missing this time. Okay, we didn't get any errors, so I think we did it. So as you know, we figured out that this works. This is the fix for that. And you saw that I kind of didn't know everything. I didn't. I didn't remember all the things that you have to install to compile this software. And that's, that's part of being a sysadmin or SRE or whatever you want to call a job title. It's, you don't know everything, man. Like, I don't know everything and hats off to you if you do, but I don't know everything. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to be a complete, like, 200 IQ genius expert at this stuff to be qualified for this kind of kind of work. The only thing you need to do is you need to have kind of like the mindset to be able to troubleshoot like I, like how I just did, you know. We are figuring out why it didn't work. Well, why it didn't want to work? It's because we need to install this thing. Okay, we try to install it, unable to locate the package. Well, what's going on? So, you know, we just go over to the internet, try to figure out why that package isn't installing and what the real package name is. We went and installed it, we did configure, and it worked. So that's part of that's part of what makes you a great Linux admin, is someone who can go on the fly, someone who can figure things out without knowing it. Someone where something breaks, it's okay because you can figure it out. And if you can't figure it out, well fear not, because all you have to do is just play around with Linux more. The more you play around with Linux, the better you're going to get at this. If you don't know what you're doing yet, don't get discouraged, man, because this stuff takes time. And as long as you're interested and you're passionate about this, and this is something that gets you excited, even if you're not great at it, just keep working at it. Just keep tinkering around in Linux. Eventually, it'll click. I promise. So now we can go ahead and do some checking, some verifying to make sure that we won here. Okay, so one way to do that is do sudo make install. I think we saw that in the guide earlier, but we did install check install. So let's try it out. Should I create default set of package docs? Yes. Enter your description with an empty line or EOF. Okay, description is 
htop open source. So we can change any of these things, but I'm just going to leave it all as default. Looks good. Hit enter. Okay, so do you want me to list them? Some of the files created by the installation are inside the home directory. You probably don't want them to be included in the package. Do you want me to list them? We can just hit no then, the default, whatever it's giving us. Saying yes is a good idea. Okay. I'll type in yes then. <laughs> I do like that it gives you a little recommendation, so we're just going to go with that. So now if we use dpackage, which is Debian package, dash L, grep htop to list us things about htop, we can see that we have htop here. And here is the description we gave it. We can go which htop, where is htop, showing us where the binaries are for it. That's cool. And let's try it out. And bam, it's working. Looks pretty good. All right, so thank you for watching. I'm glad you followed along. And just a quick recap of what happened. We tried to compile htop ourselves. We went through a little guide somewhere in Google. I can't remember where it was. Oh yeah, here it was. So we walked through the little steps. And as you saw, these steps didn't work. They didn't work, man. So we had to go through this journey, figuring out what packages to install, going through different Google searches. So just want you guys to see and experience this where things don't always go our way when we're trying to install something or we're trying to compile something. And I don't want you to get discouraged when something doesn't work because don't think that it's your lack of skill. Don't think that you're not capable of doing it. It's just, you know, these things happen a lot and you should expect them to happen all the time and you should be ready to start troubleshooting. And don't look at troubleshooting like a chore. Just look at some, it's just like a fun thing, like a little puzzle to figure out. Eventually you'll get it. So thanks for watching. See you guys on the next episode.